Hey, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm sitting in the parking lot of my kid's orthodontist while he's getting his braces tightened and um, saw a comment somebody had left today and I just thought I want to make a video really quickly and answer this. So I'm in a beanie and hack around garden clothes and totally unprepared to talk on camera, but I just thought, screw it, I'll do it. So folks ask me a, a fair amount, what are your credentials? And um, sometimes folks ask because they earnestly want to know what is your experience in permaculture? And then sometimes folks ask because they, um, they don't have positive intent, right? They want to have a gotcha or they want to um, undermine who I am and my experience in permaculture. And um, in fact, today, somebody in a, in a post, this is what I was reading right before I was making this video, called me sweet summer child. I get called honey, sweetie, girl. Um, I'm 41 years old and I've been doing permaculture for 20 years. So um, I'll be 42 later this month, but it's just uh, the kinds of questions or comments I get to that bent are increasing. Um, I'm really grateful more people are watching my videos because I want to share my passion about permaculture with everybody. Because um, I think it is the best design strategy for regenerative living. But the more subscribers I get, the more I get these kinds of comments. Um, so I thought I would just talk for a minute about what my experience in permaculture is and then... Um, yeah, maybe talk a little bit about what I've been doing on the site that we're on now and for how long. I thought this would be a good place to pause and talk about what our farm looks like now. We have one quarter acre in Portland, Oregon with over 40 fruit trees and dozens and dozens and dozens of berry bushes and herbaceous and shrubby food producing and medicinal plants and we also have ducks and chickens and bees and on average we harvest over 2,000 pounds a year of organic produce from our property which we share with the community and we use to feed our family so when I talk about my experience in permaculture I want to make sure if you haven't seen any of my videos before you get a little bit of an idea of what things actually are like here and that we actually live a lifestyle consistent with permaculture principles and ethics and with our values of seeking regeneration for communities of people and regeneration for the planet as a whole for all of the species that inhabit this planet. So I hope these still shots give you a little bit of a view of what that looks like on our property right now before I go and talk about past experiences. So if I want to talk about when I got started in permaculture, I actually first became interested in permaculture when I was 18. And that's because somebody sent me a copy of Mother Earth News. So I perused it and there were several articles on permaculture and I've always been into gardening. Um, my grandfather had an incredible garden in Indiana. I would love to go visit it and he picked these strawberries that like felt like they were the size of my fist. Like he was just such a big gardener and so into like just abundant, abundant kind of quirky eccentric gardening. He had um, this conquered grape vine with a bench underneath and I remember loving to sit there and pick grapes when I would go visit. My mom was always a big vegetable gardener. She had very formal organized raised beds and very formal cutting gardens for her flowers. Very different than what I do. So I've always been really into gardening. Um, I majored in biology in college. I thought I would follow the family profession and become a physician. And then I realized very quickly like that, that wasn't for me. I think I would have been a great doctor, but I realized that wasn't how I wanted to organize my life. And I really liked plants more than people even though I love people. Um, and in college, I was really into birds. So I've always been into birds. It's hard, that balance between like ornithology and botany 
those are two things that it's hard for me to pick which one I love more. Um, so I realized as a student that I wanted to get more involved in sustainable agriculture. I went to a conference called the Women, Food and Agriculture Network Conference. Um, I believe it was 1999. Um, and that's where I first like met women who were um, using oxen to plow their fields and using no petroleum powered anything and getting back to sustainable regenerative design and I learned about CSAs there for the first time and have since always been a big supporter of community supported agriculture but that sort of subscription service was was relatively a new concept back then so agriculture was always on my mind um, after college I ended up doing I was a certified raptor handler and I worked with birds of prey and I did wild bird rehab. Um, and I delayed grad school, much to the chagrin of my advisor, to put my new spouse through um, ultimately three rounds of grad school. And I kept postponing grad school for me. I had children, it wasn't really feasible for me to be in grad school the way we were organizing our lives. So in editing, I wanted to pause here to express my feelings on continuing education and permaculture. I don't think that PhDs or PDCs are requisite in being skilled and becoming an expert in permaculture. I absolutely think that scientific literacy and education is incredibly important to building a nuanced understanding of how we approach whole system design. But I also think that expertise comes with the experience of forming and forging an intimate, connected relationship with the land and with the creatures that live in our landscape. So I think sometimes that formal education is a hoop we have to jump through, but don't let it be something that keeps you from doing permaculture. But I always worked on aligning my life with permaculture principles, studying permaculture, reading actively. We lived in a little urban apartment in downtown St. Louis, and I had a balcony garden, and I had pots of tomatoes out back behind the apartment complex, and always looking at what can I do in my home if I can't have an extensive farm? What can I do in my home and supporting local farmers to further align with permaculture principles? So we eventually moved to the West Coast to be by family, and we ended up um, moving to the Central Oregon coast in the middle of nowhere, and we had a friend who had 20 acres, so we had a huge garden there, I had big straight rows, tractors, she had horses, and I was able to garden out there, and that was a very different experience, having just a massive, I think it was probably three quarters of an acre of, of annual veggies that I was growing, plus she had fruit trees that we had access to. Um, I had never been able to use a tractor before. So that was very different. And while I was doing that kind of gardening, I really wanted to, um, when I began focusing on my desire to design a food forest, um, sort of fully integrated, you know, um, aesthetic cottage garden, food producing food forest with annual veggie um, system and how that, experience gardening in a place where I had big long straight rows and used a tractor that really shaped my um, desire going forward to not have that kind of a garden and um, so when we eventually bought our house we were renting in Portland we moved back to Portland and we were renting and it was not affordable for us to buy a house on a teacher's salary with at the time we had three kids we couldn't afford anything so I partnered with a nonprofit and helped run their gardening program, um, basically for a food bank organization in East Portland, and helped run teams of volunteers gardening at these gardening sites that were not on my property. And then we were able to work with the land trust and buy a, um, sorry, we were working with a land trust and were able to buy a land trust home, um, which I'll link in the description to information about land trust home ownership. And that was the only way we were able to afford a home in Portland. Even now it's even less affordable. Um, 
Hang on, my kid's coming. So when we purchased our home, I had a lot of experience. Um, obviously, reading everything there is on permaculture is not the same thing as practicing it. But I had a lot of experience practicing permaculture and gardening in an urban setting, in a patio garden, gardening in pots, gardening in rural places with um, big traditional veggie gardens and fruit orchards, and then um, helping run other large gardens, raised bed, formal gardens at other people's properties. And I learned what I did not want through those experiences, what I did not want on my own property. So 13 years ago, we bought our house, 13 years ago this month. And um, I have been working on planting and growing on our property for that entire time, tweaking, becoming more intimately acquainted with my landscape so that I can tweak and change my design and improve it all of the time. I thought this would be a good point to show a few more snippets from my garden, which was 13 years ago, sod and weeds and nothing else, and now is an abundant, lush permaculture landscape full of woody and herbaceous food and medicine producing crops and ample habitat for native wildlife full of beautiful flowers that people and pollinators can enjoy. Permaculture design for me is really the lens through which I see the world and how I approach the world, how we form communities, how we relate to each other, how we relate to the planet. And permaculture uses our skills of design in order to build a regenerative way of living as human beings in the way we connect to other people and in the way we connect to the landscape. So when I share videos, um, I'm sharing out of my own experience of more than 20 years in permaculture and more than 13 years on our current property. I'm not speaking um, on subjects I haven't implemented and used for years. I'm not, um, try very hard not to have clickbait. I try very hard not to um, talk about some trendy element. I'm actually really, a, a big reason that I made my channel was because I was frustrated with some other gardening channels not permaculture channels so much. Um, all of the folks in the permaculture community are really striving to teach regenerative living and share their experience with regenerative uh, agriculture. Um, not to make any money, permaculturists don't get rich on YouTube, but we do it out of a love of permaculture and a, a desire to teach um, and share real lived experience and practical information that has proved helpful for us and works in real life. So I see a lot of gimmicky gardening videos, growing your strawberries and rain gutters and stuff like that. Um, that just is not practical and is not sustainable and is not resilient living. So part of the reason that I started making videos is I was frustrated with how much bad gardening advice there was out there. And I thought, well, I know what has worked and what has failed utterly for me. So why don't I just share some of that? So I try and be really real with these are things that don't work. These are things that have been just a disaster in my garden. These are things that um, are impractical or actually um, are greenwashing and are not sustainable in the long run, even though they may seem like it up front. So I try and share those things. And I don't talk about anything I haven't actually been doing for years. So when folks leave comments and call me honey, when folks, um, you know, call me, uh, you know, girl and try and infantilize me or um, leave comments that show they clearly haven't watched the video and they just are going to make a huge sweeping set of assumptions about me and what I'm doing. Um, it's really easy for those to feel undermining and really undercut me because I'm a human being and I give a lot of energy to this YouTube channel for very little in return because I feel that it aligns very much with my following the third ethic of permaculture, which is share the surplus. I have experience. I have 20 years of experience. I have the knowledge of what has worked and has not worked for me. So I want to share that freely with the community 
because of COVID, I can't do workshops on my property. I've done in the past loads of workshops on permaculture with kids. I have four kids. It's a topic I know intimately. Um, beekeeping, urban poultry keeping for ducks and chickens, urban orcharding, um, permaculture gardening, um, low cost sustainable veggie gardening. I've done tons of those workshops in the past and I'm not able to do those right now. So a big reason that I make permaculture videos is because then it's accessible to everybody, not just folks who can come to my garden, the 25 folks who can show up to a workshop. So um, I hope that gives you all a little look at my experience and who I am as a person. And um, just to say that, like, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I recently took down a video where I realized I'd made a big error in it. Um, I'm human like everybody else. But also I have real lived experience growing thousands and thousands of pounds of organic produce on my property every year for over a decade. And um, I would hope that folks would engage with positive intent, engage with a resilience mindset, engage with me following the, the second ethic of permaculture, which is people care, which I have a video coming up about that soon, about engaging in empathy and stepping into each other's shoes and trying to understand our lived experience as an important part of permaculture design and a crucial element to designing a resilient society. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you all because when I read comments like, oh, you sweet summer child, and then completely invalid criticisms of what I have to say, showing that somebody hasn't even watched my videos, like I, I want to have a human response to that. Um, so I hope that gives you all a look at my experience. If you have questions or comments, please drop them um, under this video and I'll try and get to them. I admit I haven't been that great about responding to comments lately because it's just, I'm feeling really disheartened with a lot of the things people have to say, but, um, I'm still going to keep a positive mindset and know that I firmly believe the design system of permaculture is effective, sustainable, resilient, and it can help regenerate depleted ecosystems and it can help human connection with other people and with the environment. So I'm going to keep pushing on. I'll be back soon.